G'day folks, thanks for stopping by the Breathless Blog. Oh, if you're a first time visitor to this crazy little idea, introduce myself. My name is Brody Grogan, I'm a photographer living here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. And after I go on a run, I take a moment just to stop, reflect and share whatever is on my mind. Something that's been sticking out in the week that's been, whether it's through my workflow or just in my life in general, but something that I think is absolutely worthwhile sharing uh, for anyone who wants to, yeah, take the time to have a bit of a listen. Now, oh, as I catch my breath, this week, um, I actually want to have a little um, share session on going right back to what it was like for me starting out full time with my photography. Now, leading into that, I'd been, I suppose, a, a very small business, part time photographer, um, uh, almost a hobbyist who'd be paid if that kind of makes sense and I know that resonates with a lot of photographers out there you know it obviously starts off as something that you love and as a passion and then you sort of end up starting to do a few cashies and then before you know it you're into um, the world of professional photography but um, truth be told one of the things that I did when I started um, that I suppose amongst my friendship group and, and people close to me people knew about but I actually did some Uber driving now um, I'm not too proud to say that I did that because you know, making the jump from going from a full-time job that paid quite well uh, into the land of trying to gain every bit of employment I could as a photographer, that was a little bit daunting and a bit scary. And in that first 12 months especially, um, yeah, like workflow is a bit slow. So Uber was the world of opportunity that I jumped into. Um, and funnily enough, when I look back at that time and even when I was doing it, I actually really enjoyed it. And I suppose, you know, when I started doing it, um, it was still illegal here in, in Brisbane. So um, I, I never say that I'm a, a badass or anything like that, but um, yes, I was driving illegally, I suppose, and trying to dodge people at the airport or at Eagle Street Pier, handing out fines and things like that. Um, the, the time that I would spend driving and um, the income that I get back was well and truly worth it because it wasn't as many drivers, uh, so it wasn't as competitive to pick up fares. Obviously, people were using the service, and so that's how I would, oh, look, probably once, maybe twice a day, sort of in, in the work run, the school run, uh, I'd, yeah, hop in the car and go for a drive and, um, you know, yeah, and meet people, new people every day. And I think that was absolutely one of the most satisfying uh, parts of that job um, was it was kind of like kind of like the speed dating world of interviewing and sort of trying to hone some skills and sharpen some skills around you know listening with people and interacting with them and learning a bit about their story uh, I think one of the things that it, that really did attract me to it was that at any given moment at any you know given time of the day and like I said it was generally in daylight hours that I was driving um, I'd certainly try and steer clear of the valley uh, which is kind of like the nightlife district here in, in Brisbane. Um, that didn't interest me at all. But, you know, even in, in that the morning hours, say between 6 and 9 and the afternoon between 3 and 6, you know, I would have, oh, geez, access to conversations with people from all walks of life. Um, having good days, bad days, you know, really happy days and clearly um, quite disturbing days so while the cash was good it was kind of like almost like a subconscious um, uh, yeah pr apprenticeship in terms of dealing with people it was like you know very much the same way almost now is that I would um, go about building rapport with someone that I don't know before I take their photograph so it was kind of like yeah, that, that rapport building phase, but without actually taking their photo, if, if that makes sense. Um, talk about insight, like, uh, it was really interesting because I know, I know I've spoken about now as a photographer, like having, sometimes having an emotional hangover or having to take a bit of time and well-being time for myself after certain jobs that I do. And I think when you're investing and in interacting with people and they're sharing their story with you, um, you know, for me, the, the human side of that and the emotional um, connection I'm trying to offer people um, sometimes, you know, enforces me or 
encourages me to actually just take a step back and, and chill for a bit. Um, you, you know, I, for, I remember there'd be mornings or afternoons where, you know, I'd go from maybe dropping, um, you know, a child or some siblings off to school then I'd go and pick up a job and there'd be someone high on drugs or in some cases low on drugs on the other side of that. Or um, one night I actually did, I don't know whether I'm gonna get arrested for this, but I basically facilitated people in a transaction of illegal goods um, that was clearly, <laughs> clearly not um, a legal enterprise, let's just say that. Um, but, you know, like it never, at, at no stage did it ever feel unsafe, but there were probably times that I felt a little uncomfortable, which I think even being able to interact with people and be polite and courteous, um, that's also probably a hidden skill set, a transferable skill set that's actually held me in pretty good stead now. Um, because I know I've mentioned before, like if I'm carrying a camera, chances are in a bit of wedding or at an event that not everyone is all that happy to see me when I turn up to say hey I want to take your photograph um, I know that looked pretty well so being able to yeah build rapport really quickly um, was something that I take from that experience and now use every day and I think you know when someone used to get into the car like I you would know within three seconds whether um, or you know like how that trip was going to pan out like whether the person's in a good mood, prepared to have a chat with you, and that was, um, you know, all based on, you know, g'day mate, how you going? But you knew just their um, body language or non-verbals or sometimes verbals or sometimes just downright played r rude um, arrogance. Uh, yeah, you're like, okay, well, we're probably not gonna be having a chat for the next 20 minutes or five minutes or whatever it is. Um, you know, I know, I can remember, at times having a moral quandary where uh, it was almost like a, a, a case of um, like, I don't know how else to explain it at the moment, but like doctor-patient privilege or like client-patient privilege where like I can, I can clearly see that something's not right with this person or in their life or what they're about to go and do or what's been done to them. You know, like what obligation would I actually have to share this with police or you know people if they were to like if uber got in touch with me and um and interviewed me about it like i'd i always would think about that like how would i you know hold a person's confidence if they've just um disclosed to me that they're um suffering some domestic violence abuse which actually happened um or you know clearly dropping people off in a dangerous situation it's things like that um you know which again like it's not sometimes not too dissimilar especially in, in the world of say um port you know taking portraits of people and, and chatting with people about their lives and and often people will forget that they're being recorded or that they've said something and go oh hang on sorry is that off the record and, um you know of course that that, that confidentiality and, and privilege to know that information is something that i hold really really close but you know i often wonder like if it was something really serious, what would I do? I don't even have an answer to that right now, but um, but I think, yeah, like just the, one of the greatest things of that was just the insight into people. And you know what, at that time, like I didn't, I don't know, like I didn't know that I wanted to, you know, dive as far into the storytelling, um, you know, portrait aspect of taking photographs. Like, which just sounds kind of crazy now, think about it, going into full-time business where that's, literally the corner piece of my business after three or four years of of that but um but yeah i guess you know like i probably don't have much more to add today other than you know for you sitting there and you think um you know you'd love to pursue something that you love and and you may be sitting there in a job that potentially that doesn't exactly fill your cup or creatively inspire you every day uh and you think you know how could I possibly jump out and branch out into something that is a hobby or I want to pursue when I don't have the skill set? But there are so many things that I look back to my working life over, oh, I suppose it's only 15 years now, that, you know, be it through cricket to, um, 
you know, administration and things like that. There's so many skills that are transferable to even being an Uber driver on a casual slash part-time basis and how that's going to help me out as a photographer. Um, I think when we reflect and stop and actually have a look at the skills that we have and what we're good at, um, but then also, I, I suppose, the things that we need to develop and get better at, um, that there is actually a lot of transferable things to help us chase and pursue something that we're passionate about and um, and that gives meaning to our life and helps yeah fill us up and fill our cup and you know gives us fulfillment in what we're doing every day so yeah whatever that is for you i just thought it's worthwhile me sharing a little bit of uber life with you because i think it's probably one of the um the things that people would ask me as to how i started out or how i got going and uh, I think it's probably the case for a lot of photographers where other people just look at them and just see the end results or where they're at now. But, you know, like a lot of things, um, you know, I'm not too proud to say that I had to hustle and, and do things that, you know, may have been a, a little bland or, um, you know, monotonous. But at the same time, would I change it for a second? No way in the world because it's actually got me to where I want to be and enabled me to pursue something that I love and I'm passionate about so um, yeah that would probably be my bit of advice for the day I don't know or or something that I've tried to do that I'm happy to share with so um, that's enough for today I reckon um, my run today was pretty good given that I absolutely smashed myself with a run on Sunday and scarily enough my legs and body feel pretty good today so this has been the breathless blog thanks for checking in um, yeah I'd love to hear any crazy little jobs that you may have done to set you up for the career you're in now, something that you probably didn't even think would link, but actually has. So until next time, yeah, I'm Brody. Thanks for stopping by. Have an awesome week. Um, yeah, love to hear from you. Catch you out. See ya.